Hey there, it's Triple A Wednesday, which means Ask Alyssa Anything Wednesday, and I am answering all the questions I've gotten from you about how to strengthen your story and about the publishing industry. We have some great questions on deck, but first, a little bit of housekeeping, you know the drill. If you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and do so. This community means so much to me and I am so, so excited to continue growing it and continue supporting all of you amazing authors. Also, if you can, please go ahead and hit that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't already, pop into the description below to grab my free story self-assessment. That's a worksheet I designed specifically for you, my YouTube viewers, to help you strengthen your story. I know how hard it can be to self-edit and self-revise. Not everyone has the opportunity to work with a professional editor, so I wanted to give you a resource that you can use today and help you figure out where to make your story stronger and how to do so. It's also going to sign you up for my exclusive newsletter where I provide insights and tips that are not available anywhere on my channel, so you don't want to miss out on that. Without further ado, let's dive into the first question today. What is entailed in an agent author signing? Are you signing away rights to your book when you sign with an agent? What exactly are you agreeing to? What if you wanna back out? What is the point of no return? Great question here. Something I haven't actually addressed on my channel before, so I really appreciate you bringing this up. Are you signing away your rights to your book when you sign with an agent? No. What you are signing is an offer of representation where you are agreeing to work with that literary agent, and if that literary agent sells your book to a publisher, you are agreeing to give the literary agent 15% commission on the advance that the publisher pays you for the rights to your book, as well as 15% on any future royalties you make, as well as 15% on any foreign editions or audiobooks or film rights that the agent sells. Basically, any type of deal that the agent makes you, they're going to take a 15% cut. That is what you are agreeing to. I'm presuming that in the offer of representation letter, there's also some kind of clause that says you can't work with another literary agent outside of them. That would make sense. I also think that every agency is going to set their own standards in terms of canceling the contract or backing out of the contract. But what I know is that authors do fire their literary agents and change literary agents. I know several authors personally who are in the process of finding a new literary agent right now. So it is absolutely possible for you to get out of your contract with the literary agent if the partnership is not working out for you. The literary agent can also decide they no longer want to work with you if something goes awry as well. I hope that helps to clarify, but to your first point, no, you are not signing the rights to your book at that moment. That would be when you are signing a book deal of some kind with a publisher. Here's another question. I have a follow-up question and it's a bit sensitive. How much difference does age make for a prospective debut author? For myself, I'm looking at this as an older author who will be in my mid 60s by the time my first book would be published. And I can imagine a publisher and agent having legitimate concerns about how many novels I've got in me. I can imagine that a younger audience might be wondering about this as well. The question of an author's age is something I've seen discussed quite a bit in the comments on my channel. So I'm really glad that you brought this up it's a brave question to ask. As you said, it's sensitive and a little bit uncomfortable, so I'm excited to address it now. In my experience, and admittedly, this is just coming from personal anecdotes and my understanding of the industry from working at Penguin Random House, Macmillan, and a top literary agency in New York, but from that personal experience, working with editors at publishing houses and working with high-profile literary agents, the age range of their clientele actually ranged very significantly. And to be honest, my impression is that there's more of an enforcement of a minimum age range than a maximum age range, if that makes sense. So it's very unlikely if you are below the age of 18 to get a literary agent to represent you. It's not impossible by any means, but I think there is issues of consent and also just issues of developing your craft as a writer at that point. And I personally did not see literary agents or publishers working with authors really below their early 20s. I would say it is far less common to work with an author under age 20 than it is to work with an author in their mid 60s or above. I worked with several authors who fall into the older age range when I was in the industry. Admittedly, they were a bit more established in their career. They weren't debut authors, but they were still highly respected and publishers were very still interested in nurturing that relationship. 
So I would not see your age, especially in mid 60s, as a huge roadblock for you. And remember that when a literary agent is offering you representation, they do want to work with you for the rest of your career, but they're ultimately signing you because they love the book that you have queried them. And they're most excited about selling that one. They're not looking at you and saying, oh, well, I love this book, but they don't have four more books in them, so I'm not gonna sign them. That's not really what they're thinking. They're thinking, I love this book so much, I can't wait to sell it. And if they have more books in them, that's even better. Does that make sense? There are plenty of younger authors who just write one book as well, or maybe don't write a book for 10 more years. So as much as an agent does want to work with you through the rest of your books, they're most interested in selling this specific book that you've queried them because they loved it and responded to it so well. So I wouldn't let your age hold you back at all. Here's another question. How do you use Twitter so agents can find you? I've steered clear of it, but only just discovered the advertising potential through it. So it's true that literary agents are highly active on Twitter, and there are actually pitch events throughout the year for different genres where agents review pitches on Twitter from authors, and you can potentially get them to request the full manuscript through that. So it is definitely a good place to engage with literary agents and learn more about the publishing industry, check their manuscript wish list, and all of that. Now, I wouldn't say you have to worry about getting a certain amount of followers or anything like that. Use Twitter how you wanna use it. Use it as you use any other social media. Put out content if you want to, and if you feel compelled to, follow people if you want to and feel compelled to, but you don't necessarily have to work actively to build a following to get a literary agent's interest and or representation. I would say the best use case for that with Twitter is to participate in those pitch events I just referenced. And a literary agent who is responding to your pitch at one of those Twitter parties doesn't care how many Twitter followers you have necessarily. So they're really just going to be looking at the pitch itself. I hope that helped to clarify. All right, we have time for one more question here. A bit of a logistical one. I'm coming to an end on editing with only three chapters left. First, congrats on getting to this point. That's huge and really exciting. Question, how should a manuscript be formatted when you are sending it out to agents during querying? Good question here. So the standard formatting for the publishing industry is 12 point font, double spaced with page numbers. That's pretty much it. When you are pasting the text into the bottom of your query email, you don't need to include the title page if you have one, but if you have a title page when you send it to a literary agent, that's fine. You don't necessarily need one. You can also put the title and your name in the header or the footer so that it runs on all pages. In addition to the title, the top of your manuscript will typically also have your name, the word count, and your email address as well. You can just put that in the upper right or upper left corner. The formatting is not so, so specific. It's really more about the 12 point double spaced font and the page numbers. Make sure you have all of those. And then just do a quick Google search for manuscript formatting and you'll see what I mean about the title page that is optional to include. I hope you liked those questions today and got something out of this. If you did, please go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't already. Don't forget to subscribe again if you haven't already. And that free story self-assessment is waiting for you in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.